Hi class, this is Juan Ramirez with EE2715 and this video will be on a second example uh, on first order circuits which is chapter 7 of the book. So uh, the example is shown below um, and for this example if you recall the first one we did a um, RC circuit analysis. Uh, one difference was that the transient um, was created by a switch opening. Um, in this case, however, our transient is created by virtue of the input function. Our input function is a current source and it follows a sum of two step uh, functions. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, one recommendation for this example is that um, when we approach the step-by-step -step method, which is how we go about our our RC and RL circuit analysis, um, I encourage you to pause right when we're about to do each step and see if you can do uh, the step and then maybe play the video after you're done getting an answer for that step and see if um, what I get is what you got. So that's just my recommendation for uh, example two. And then example three, I, I recommend you actually work out all on your own um, and then play the video to watch. So we'll start off by um, elaborating a little bit on the step function. So let's take a look at what that what that actually means graphically. Uh, so on the right I have the time domain and the function is a current function. So the first part negative u of negative t. Um, so what that means is, let's first address u of negative t. u of negative t, the, the inside of the t, so, so the sort of um, input variable to the function being negative, it actually flips the function across the vertical axis. So, um, a u of negative t would look like this. Here, I'll use black for some contrast. Uh, so instead of being 0 and at time 0 it going to 1, it would go from 1 and at time 0 go to 0. That would be u of negative t. Now, negative u of negative t would simply be that multiplied by negative 1. So on the right side, 0 times negative 1 is 0. But on the left side, or before times 0, um, instead of being 1, you multiply that by negative 1, you get negative 1. So let me draw that on the main plot. Okay. So that's our negative u of negative t. All right, now how about the plus 2u of t? Well, plus 2u of t, that's going to have a regular u of t function, uh, except instead of going to time 1 at, at or, sorry, to a value of 1 at time 0, it goes to a value of 2. So it's 0, and at time 0, it goes to a value of 2. Okay, so that's 2. All right, and then when you add them up, um, so for times before 0, um, the first part of the function has a value of negative 1, the second part of the function has a value of 0, so the addition has a value of negative 1. So I'll just write that out um, over here. And then after time 0, uh, the function, the first part has a value of 0, the second one has a value of 2, so it goes up to 2. All right, so that's the input current function. And I like to show it graphically so that we can keep that in mind when we are um, doing our circuit analysis. Okay, so step one will be to find the initial current through the inductor. Okay, so ultimately we want to find voltage across the 10 ohm resistor, but for an RL circuit, that means we have to first find the inductor current. So let's analyze the circuit in the initial state. 
Initial state means assuming the circuit was in the initial position, so before time zero, for a long time. And that means that the inductor gets replaced with a short circuit because we're assuming steady state conditions. Um, so at this point, I would encourage you to pause the video and see if you could find the initial inductor current um, and then watch or play on the video to, to see what I end up getting. So uh, the initial input current value is negative one, according to that little plot we have at, at the right for time before zero. Um, and let's see, what else do we have? We have the resistor. Instead of an inductor, now I have a short circuit. And we're going to ultimately look for the induct the the current through that short circuit. Okay. Well, um, what is the current through that short circuit? Well, kind of interesting. Um, you may just tell right off the bat that all the current through that current source will have to go into that short circuit. Why is that? Well, current takes the path of least resistance. Um, but that's probably not a good enough answer for you because uh, it, it wouldn't be for me. So the way I would ask it is what if we did current division? Um, if we did a current division, IL of zero would be equal to the input current, so I'll say IS, times, um, and then the current through IL of zero would be one over R, um, and then the other currents would be, or sorry, the numerator of the current division would be one over R, and then the denominator would be one over R plus one over 10 plus one over 12. Okay, well, what's this one over R? Well, R is actually the short circuit resistance. Well, what's the resistance of a short circuit? It's zero, right? And if the resistance of a short circuit is zero, one over that resistance would be infinity or would approach infinity. Okay, well, then what happens? You end up with infinity over infinity plus 1 over 10 plus 1 over 12. If you use L'Hopital's rule, you would determine that the limit would be when you have sort of when you have a limit that approaches infinity over infinity, um, that is equal to 1. Uh, so that's how we end up with. IL of zero equaling IS equaling negative one amp for the first part. But usually just by inspection. Uh, another way to think about it is the short circuit has a voltage of zero, right? By, def by default, every short circuit has a voltage of zero. Every open circuit has a current of zero. Um, if the short circuit has a voltage of zero and the negative one amp current source is in parallel with it, then that current source must have a voltage of zero. Well, if the voltage is zero across that, well, that's also in parallel with the 10 ohm and the 10 plus 12 ohm, 10 plus 2 ohm. Those voltages, those resistors, sorry, have voltages of zero, therefore no current through them. So that's another way you can prove it to yourself. Uh, anyway, let's go to our final state, which is step two. So that's looking at the circuit after the transition, right? And if we recall, the transition was in the input from negative one to two amps. Um, and we're going to assume it's in steady state now because the time is approaching infinity. 
that means we can replace the inductor with a short circuit. Well, if you thought of this um, already, you probably realize you kind of had the same situation as you had above. And sort of by inspection, IL of zero again will be equal to IS, which is in this case two amps. That's because again, all that current will be fed through the, through the short circuit. Okay, so first two steps were pretty straightforward for this one. Step three, find tau. Sorry, find the feminine resistance. Step four is to find the time constant. Um, and when you find the feminine resistance, that's for time greater than zero. Okay, so what do we do to find feminine resistance? We kill or turn off our voltage and current sources. So to turn off a current source, you replace it with an open circuit. Okay, then you have your resistor. You're looking for that equivalent resistance where the inductor is. All right, and then you have your resistances. Okay, so because the current source is an open circuit, you could disregard it. In fact, I'm just going to erase it to eliminate any confusion. You end up with that circuit here. All right, and so the equivalent resistance that we're measuring is in parallel with the 10 ohm and in parallel with 2 plus 10. So R thevenin, which is the same as R equivalent, is the same as 10 in parallel with 10 plus 2. Um, so that'll give you 5.45 ohms. Now step three. Step four, you probably can do pretty easily. That is to find tau. Again, that's for time greater than zero. Although in this circuit example, it doesn't really matter because the only thing that's happening between uh, time before zero and after is the change in the input current. It's not like a switch actuation. Um, but the tau for an RL circuit is L over R7. Okay, uh, and so that gives you 0.2 Henry's or 200 millihenries. Um, all over our 5.45 ohms, and that'll give you a value in seconds, which is 0 0.037 seconds. Okay, so now we're ready to plug everything into our, you know, inductor response, so RL circuit response, um, that general equation. Our general equation has you plug in the final current plus the initial current minus the final current times e to the negative t over the time constant. Uh, and that's going to be in amps for time greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so this is our inductor current. Um, so you end up with 2 minus 3 e to the negative 27t. If you divide 1 over 0 0.037, that's in amps. Okay, up until now, all relatively trivial um, once we become comfortable with the step by step method. Next step is actually a little bit more tricky. Now you know the inductor current, you know IL of T, 
you want to find v0 of t. Um, how do you do that? Right? That, that's a, a valid question. So one approach you might think about first is can I correlate the current leaving the inductor with the current entering um, the 2 and 10 ohm series resistance branch? And the answer is that's sort of hard to do with, let's say, current division. You can't really do that. Why? Um, in, in theory, you could. The math would probably just be a little bit messy because uh, you would be assuming the current from the source would be 2 amps. Uh, the math would be kind of tricky. Instead, though, one thing I'm positive about is that that inductor is in parallel with both the 10 and the sorry, the 2 and the 10 ohm resistors that are in series. What if we find the inductor voltage, and then once we know that voltage, we know that voltage is in parallel with the voltage across both resistors. We can use voltage division to then find V out of zero. Okay, so that's the approach that I recommend taking. Right, so now we're going to actually find V of T. And what I'll do is I'm going to redraw part of the circuit. Okay, so that's what we have, and we know I, L of T. We don't know, but would like to know, uh, V, L of T. All right. So, let's find V, L of T. Well, you may recall that V equals L, V, I, D, T. Well, that's how we're going to find our inductor voltage, by taking the derivative of the inductor current, which we know, uh, and multiplying that by the inductance. So the inductance is 0.2 henrys. And we're going to take the derivative rate of change of the current function, which we just found. All right, so then you end up with 0.2 times, and then the derivative of the current function is going to be what, uh, let's see, 81, that's 3 times 27, negative 3 times negative 27, 81, e to the negative 27t. Okay, so you end up with 16.2 e to the negative 27t, and that's in volts for time greater than zero, greater than or equal to zero. All right, so that is the inductor voltage function. Once you have that, you can use voltage division to find the voltage across the 10 ohm resistor because the inductor is in parallel with both the two and 10 ohm resistors. So uh, the voltage across the inductor is also the voltage across both of those resistors to find the voltage across one of them we do voltage division and it looks like this all right so then you end up with 10 over 12 times 16.2 e to the negative 27t um, which comes out to 13.5 e to the negative 27t that's in volts for time greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so that's how we went about solving that example. Um, hopefully you were able to follow the steps and uh, do the steps on your own and, and get the right answers. Again, um, please feel free to reach out by email if you're stuck on any of the steps that we did. Thank you.